what project what project do you guys think is going to die is it bitcoin is it ethereum what's the future hmm. i mean i'll jump in and say that i don't i'm not going to say it's going to die but i think it's set to bleed badly and and what i'm talking about might come as a shock but bitcoin i think bitcoin we've seen this narrative of ethereum suffering because of its scalability issues and then you've got matic and zilliqa and all these faster more scalable blockchains uh smart contract networks like solana coming onto the scene and mm -hmm. benefiting right i think we're going to see that same narrative for at least a period of time whether it's a couple months whether it's six months or a year i don't know it might just be a couple weeks but where bitcoin's scalability issues fall under a microscope and we see stuff like litecoin bitcoin cash nano all these digital cash solutions that you can actually spend because people have built up wealth in bitcoin and a lot of them want to spend it but you can't spend it unless your purchase is large enough same thing it's the same narrative as ethereum gas fees being high right? There's a lot of trades you can't make on Uniswap right now, unless you have enough money to, to justify the transaction fee. Yeah. And I think we're going to see that with Bitcoin for a period of time. Do I think it's going to kill Bitcoin completely? No, but do I think it's going to make Bitcoin bleed or, or could it even be the catalyst that sends us into the next bear market or next correction? I think it could be. Yeah, they catch up. Oh, Bill. Okay. No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to challenge that a little bit. Like sure. you may, you may be right with Bitcoin, but I just saw a chart the other day that kind of blew my mind. I saw it over on DIY investing and he basically had the Bitcoin USD versus M1, the total money supply. And in, in terms of that chart, Bitcoin is not even where it was back when it was at $14,000 in like July of 2018 or 2019. So like, because they've doubled the money supply since COVID started, Bitcoin compared with overall money hasn't even in in what i think hasn't even seen a bull run yet like we've just seen the bitcoin price go up because they're printing money and everybody's dumping money into bitcoin i don't think we've even seen the beginning of the 2021 bull run yeah i would i, I would have to push back too like I, I i understand what you're saying i mean obviously bitcoin is archaic and it is not the best technology but kind of like bank of america said i keep going back to that report because it's just so fascinating the number one use case of Bitcoin is that it appreciates in value and that doesn't matter how fast it is. And I know it's all these corporations they really say that. Yeah. They literally said that they said it's number one uh, trait. Why it's good is because it appreciates in value. That's Bitcoin awesome. is digital gold. Bitcoin is not, Bitcoin is not anything more than that. It, nobody wants to spend Bitcoin. And as long as that's the narrative and nobody wants to spend it, then it's going to keep going up in value. And you see Michael Saylor driving that narrative and Elon Musk driving it. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to change. But uh, in terms of, you know, I, I do understand what you're saying, though. Like, I get the point. If Bitcoin was trying to be a currency, then I think that would matter. But I think we are going to see, like, projects that I look at in the future as having a real hard time are ones that are older technology that, you know, are trying to accomplish, like, actually being a digital currency. Something like Bitcoin Cash or something like Litecoin. And they're just far superior ones out there. I mean, like Nano, for instance, is <laughs> Nano's kind of a meme, right? Like Nano's a meme from 2017, but or the, the old meme was Rayblox. But Nano is way faster. Dash is way faster. You have these that are super, super fast that, you know, basically, I mean, Digibyte's another one that's super fast. And so I don't really see a use case for Bitcoin Cash, honestly, rising up. I, I think that if you look back, uh, you know, if you go through all of the projects, sorry, I'm holding my comb. Uh, if you go back and you look at all the projects from 2017 when they were at their peaks, all of the projects that were, you know, uh, that existed, that were running, that had been around for like a year or six months or whatever. And you go back and you look at Bitcoin Cash, like it will, I don't know if it'll ever top its 2017 high. And, and we know what it was. I mean, we know it got launched. It was crazy on Coinbase and all that stuff. But I think Bitcoin Cash is one that I kind of look at. And of course, you know, you have the XRP stuff as well, which who knows what's going to happen there. So do you think that we'll ever get to a point where people won't want to have their checking accounts, their day-to-day -day purchases done in, in dollars because of potential inflation? And if so, what do you think would step in to replace that? Yeah, yeah, they're going to want, they're going to want to use fed coin because, yep. uh, <laughs> because that's probably the only legal currency that will be accepted in certain countries. Some, yeah. some, some type of stable coin. Yeah. Alex. 
I'm thinking the same thing, like uh, centralized coins. I would say something like, uh, I don't know, uh, Binance Chain, XRP, uh, EOS, um, definitely Tether. I mean, I haven't looked too deep since recent news, but from what, they, what I've seen, um, things like that might die. Um, now, when it comes to specifically the Bitcoin thing, I'm kind of on the same train. Uh, I would say that it's, it's, it's appreciates in value. It's the household name. It's kind of like uh, the rare NFT uh, Michael Jordan rookie card of currencies, I feel. Um, I don't think it's going to go away too easy. Um, but yeah, I understand the whole scalability thing with Ethereum. What do you, when do you, I just want to ask you guys this, uh, probably know a little bit better than I, I do. When do you think Ethereum 2.0 is going to eventually come to fruition? Like seriously, like do you think it's going to solve the, the, the speeds and the fees? I think so. So ETH 2.0 is, is going to launch probably in one or two years, depending on when they launch their technology. But I think with rollups from Optimism to ZK rollups, Ethereum is going to scale. I think Ethereum is, is the future. I think the whole issue with transactions, transaction speed will be resolved probably this year. Interesting. All right. I, I would say I, I, I have faith that Ethereum is going to fix the problem. It may be 2023 is when they say supposedly it's going to be done by, but I don't think there's any way possible Ethereum is going to keep going if it doesn't, you know, roll out faster, no pun intended. But they are going to be coming out with, you know, the the London forwards to the EIP 1559. And I can't remember if the EIP 3368 got approved or not. But the fact is you, you see these projects expanding to other blockchains. You see none of them leaving Ethereum. I mean, of course, you know, Cardano left Ethereum, but it was just a test net, you know, basically. So, you know, I, I don't think we're going to see any projects cash in their chips and say, ah, we're just not going to, we're going to leave Ethereum alone. They're all going to just be hanging around while Ethereum 2.0 fixes itself. And, you know, when you've got like Polygon coming on, trying to bring a multi-chain ecosystem, I, I think that Ethereum is ultimately going to be in fine hands. Right now, I think kind of what you're seeing is, like uh, kind of almost a propaganda campaign against Ethereum by all these other chains. I mean, we know Binance has been accused of, you know, inflating, uh, fraudulently inflating the gas fees themselves. And I think what we're seeing is a lot of, you know, conspiring from a lot of the other chains right now to try to kick Ethereum while it's down. Yeah, how about that? How about that when Binance was pumping, how it uh, stopped Ethereum withdrawals and stuff like that? <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> I've been trying to get CZ on the show. I want to talk to him about it. We'll see what he says. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.